This is Dr. Stephen Lohm, lifestyle medicine cardiologist. And in this video, we're gonna talk about obesity and weight loss. We're gonna compare weight loss drugs to weight loss surgery to a lifestyle medicine approach. Now, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, turn the notifications on so you don't miss any future videos. Let's go. Drugs versus weight loss surgery versus diet and the lifestyle medicine approach for weight loss. Let's get right into it. I recently had the honor of presenting this topic at the International Conference on Nutrition and Medicine as a part of an obesity and weight loss panel with a bunch of great experts. First, I'm gonna summarize what the other panelists had to say, then I'm gonna go into my thoughts in detail. We first heard from Dr. Neil Barnard, president of the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. He spoke about the expense of these drugs, that about $15,600 per year for Wygovi, and if we were to treat 93 million obese adults with this, it would cost $1.5 trillion per year. Crazy. He showed published data that 48% of people who take these drugs have stopped them after one year, and 70% after two years due to many different reasons. These drugs just aren't going to work, he argued. We then heard from Dr. Jamie Kane, an obesity and weight loss specialist that oversees a program in nine states around the New York area in the Northeast United States. He argues that obesity is a chronic disease. It's not just a lifestyle choice. It's pretty complex. And regaining weight is extremely common after people lose it. We have such an obesogenic environment in the United States. Is education and telling people what to do enough? Probably not. And there's a lot of complex physiologic adaptations that occur when you lose weight, a lot of hormonal changes that make it challenging. Now, some of these drugs may have cardiovascular benefits, as I'll show you. There's a lot of other complex special considerations, but weight loss drugs certainly can be used concomitantly with the lifestyle medicine approach. You can do that with weight loss surgery as well, but not quite as easy. Those were arguments in favor of using weight loss drugs. Now, here's some arguments against them. Medications do have a limited effect, and actually once you stop the medication, you gain a lot of weight back. Many medications can actually be reproduced by lifestyle, so we could do this more naturally. Medications can have side effects, or some instances you can't use them, but he does say, don't just focus on one thing, just diet, just weight loss drugs, just surgery. We really need to use these all in combination. And there is some significant issues with cost, coverage, and actually being able to manufacture them and produce them. Are we actually going to be able to scale it up to treat all those obese Americans? We then heard from Dr. Garth Davis, a weight loss surgeon at Houston Methodist. He's pretty well known. He wrote this awesome book called Proteinaholic. I recommend you guys all check it out. Link in the description below. He talks about the purpose of weight loss surgery and how it can be used as an excellent tool in combination with lifestyle in order to lower people's BMI, and actually lower heart disease risk and diabetes risk significantly. He shared some powerful stories of his morbidly obese patients losing weight and then running things like Ironman triathlons, again emphasizing using a lifestyle medicine approach along with weight loss surgery. We then heard from Dr. James Loomis. He's an internist and medical director of the Barnard Medical Center. You may know him from his appearance in the documentary The Game Changers, which is available on Netflix to watch. He has both a World Series ring and a Super Bowl ring, which he earned as team physician. He talks about this horrible diet cycle where you start a diet, restrict yourself, you feel deprived, then you have cravings, you give in, and then you have low self-esteem, then eventually you start the diet again and start that cycle over and over and over again. He says, we need to break this cycle. We need to change our system. Him and I agree there, no question. He ended with a powerful quote, which I love, that people are fed by the food industry, which pays no attention to your health and are treated by the healthcare industry, which pays no attention to your food. We then heard from Hannah Kaliova, who is an MD, PhD, who's published a lot of research in this area. She says the solution is a plant-based diet, make sure you eat breakfast, and consider intermittent fasting as your approach to long-term weight loss. Then I had the honor of speaking next, which I'll share with you soon, but first, we heard from Chuck Carroll of the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. Chuck has an amazing story, losing 300 pounds. He first started with weight loss surgery and then a plant-based diet. Here we are together. I got a big pants photo with him. He has an amazing podcast called The Exam Room Podcast. I've had the pleasure of being on his podcast three times. Check this one out, Three Foods Your Heart Loves. Link in the description below. Now let me share with you what I had to say about lifestyle medicine and weight loss. I first started by telling my personal story, then my clinical experiences, 
my thoughts on weight loss and weight loss medications, and then what we need to do. This was me back in 2014, nearly 100 pounds heavier, well on my way to many different standard American diseases following the standard American diet. And all I did in my clinical practice is give pill after pill after pill like I was trained. I did not focus on lifestyle medicine. As I tried to recapture my health, I made a lot of mistakes. 270 pounds, signed up for a marathon. Absolutely brilliant, right? Nope, wrong thing to do. Then I followed the USDA dietary guidelines, lean meats, low-fat dairy, and put olive oil over everything, but I did not want to give up the unhealthy foods, which I still consumed in smaller amounts in moderation. Moderation doesn't work, right? You shouldn't do heroin and cocaine in moderation. You shouldn't smoke cigarettes in moderation. Things that are bad for you should be zero. I made all those mistakes. Then Netflix randomly suggested that I watch Forks Over Knives and Nats, which changed my life. Showed me the power of lifestyle medicine, the power of plant-based diets. I lost weight all the way down to my ideal body weight and thought to myself, I'm never going back. But I must admit the pandemic was very stressful. I gained back about 20 pounds or so that I had lost. Still feeling good, still 100% plant-based. I needed a wake-up call. And this was my wake-up call. I was running a half marathon. Two runners had full cardiac arrest literally right in front of me. I had to do CPR. We had to defibrillate them both. We got them both back. They both had severe blockages in the LAD, the Widowmaker, made full recoveries. This is them meeting each other for the first time on the Today Show and me reuniting with them. It was a beautiful, beautiful moment. Both of them were very good at exercise. They felt good. They were lean, but they did not quite follow the proper diet. This was published all over the world and it was amazing, but I was really, really disappointed that all these news outlets did not talk about eating healthy and lifestyle medicine. It was all about just the miraculous nature of this event and learning CPR. That was their message. I really wanted to focus on eating healthy because I know that's the most powerful thing to do. Fortunately, the American Heart Association was all on board. So was the American Medical Association. They talked a lot about following a plant-based diet in addition to exercising. I'm super happy to say that Mike and Greg, the two runners, have made full recoveries. They're doing great, and they're nearly exclusively whole food, plant-based in regards to their diet at this point in time. And growing up, my mom was 300 pounds. My dad was 300 pounds. They were both diabetic. I gave my mom the book, How Not to Die, and she read it, and she lost herself more than 100 pounds, got off all of her medications. My dad, same thing. I can't believe it. He lost 100 pounds, reversed his diabetes and his high blood pressure. Now, my sister weighed 450 pounds growing up. She ended up having weight loss surgery, something called a duodenal switch. She lost 300 pounds, and to this day now, she is, again, nearly 100% whole food plant-based in order to keep the weight off. So that's my personal experience with obesity and weight loss in my family and with those two runners, which I've become good friends with. Now I want to share with you my clinical experience. Initially, as I was seeing patients, I completely ignored any discussions in regards to lifestyle. I knew none of this stuff. I had no training in nutrition whatsoever. I was taken out to fancy dinners by pharmaceutical representatives and brainwashed it thinking the only solution to blood pressure or cholesterol or heart disease prevention was pills, 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 pills. So I avoided talking nutrition with my patients, I didn't even know what to tell them. Quite embarrassing looking back at it, but that's the way almost all doctors are. Then when I saw Forks Over Knives lost weight, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to save the world. I'm going to get everybody to go 100% whole food plant-based. We're going to cure heart disease. This is amazing. Everybody needs to know this. You know what? People don't want to hear it. They do not want to hear that this is what you have to do. And so when I gave them the strong message that you need to go 100% whole food plant-based, most patients just shut down and hardly would make any changes at all. And it's frustrating for doctors. I want my patient to be healthy, but it's not that easy. So then I said, all right, maybe I'm going to tell my patients, try to get to 90% whole food plant-based. Just cut the processed foods out, reduce the animal foods as much as you can. Even that was tough. There's cultural barriers, there's behavioral change issues. It's not easy, it's quite complex. And this is what makes doctors not wanna follow this approach because they don't get paid for it, it takes a lot of time, and then patients just don't listen and do it. It's really hard as well when you wanna make some initiatives to get support from hospital systems. I couldn't get an Ornish lifestyle medicine program going. I couldn't get a CHIP program, community health improvement program going. It was all about the money. It was not gonna make money. 
I was fortunate that a lot of my colleagues, they really understood it though. When I talked with them about the science and the data about plant-based diets, heart disease prevention and reversal, they really got it. And a lot of them actually converted over to 100% plant-based diets, went out and got board certified in lifestyle medicine and really appreciate and spread this message. But there were still some that would fight it. They would just be like, no, this is a joke. You can't get everybody to change their diet. Don't worry about it. Just give them pills. Just put in stents. And some people actually go out as far as attacking other people who are trying to spread the lifestyle medicine message, which is ridiculous because the leading cause of death amongst physicians is heart disease. We need to lead by example, get ourselves healthy, follow a plant-based diet, exercise so that we can do what's best for our patients and for the country. Now, here are my thoughts specific to weight loss. Lifestyle and diet is the answer. We already have the answer, but there's no money in this. There's no money in lifestyle medicine. The way our current system is set up, we lose money if we keep everybody healthy, which is wrong. We need to change it. But there's a lot of money in drugs. It's a billion, billion, billion dollar industry and weight loss drugs have a huge potential to make drug companies so much money. It is absolutely mind blowing. But the research really shows diet and lifestyle is the key. Check out this study called the Broad Trial. This randomized patients to a whole food, plant-based diet that was not calorie restricted. You could eat all you wanted as long as you kept it unprocessed and kept it low fat. And what this ended up showing is there was more weight loss after six and 12 months than any other trial that did not limit energy intake or mandate regular exercise. There we go, we got it. The science shows what to do to lose weight. Whole food, plant-based, low-fat diet. And this is where I give a lot of credit to Dr. John McDougall and his starch-based diet. He advocates a whole food, plant-based, low-fat diet, but focusing on starches because they make you feel full. And that's what you need when you eat this. You need to feel satisfied. Let me show you why. These weight loss drugs like Wygovi and, and Manjaro and Ozempic, they work by increasing GLP-1. Well, guess what? Glucose is the most potent stimulator of GLP-1. And what happens when you eat a potato and it slowly breaks down throughout your small intestine and large intestine? It stimulates GLP-1. So this is actually nature's ozempic. This is a natural way of stimulating your GLP-1 to make you feel full. And that's why his diet produces huge amounts of weight loss. Similar to other starchy vegetables like potatoes, whole grains, the same thing. Check it out. The more whole grains you eat, the more weight you lose. It's that simple. And it's not just weight loss. Each additional three servings of whole grains was associated with a 25% lower risk of mortality from cardiovascular disease. That's what we want. And Dr. Jamie Kane shared this slide as well. The side effects are quite significant with the Ozempic, Manjaro, and Govi medications, GERD, nausea and vomiting, other GI side effects. There's a risk of medullary thyroid cancer, perhaps, and maybe papillary as well pancreatitis and pancreatic cancer. One of the speakers shared a story of pretty dramatic pancreatitis that they saw from these drugs and gallbladder dysfunction. You don't get these things when you take a lifestyle medicine dietary approach. We need an absolute paradigm shift, a better support system to make this easier for people to do. That's the problem is we tell them eat healthy, then they go out into the world, they have no support. Now, using weight loss drugs is simply mopping the floor. It's not treating the underlying cause of the problem. And yes, there's some research to say that these drugs can lower overall mortality and overall cardiovascular risk. This study here showed maybe a 20% reduction in major adverse cardiac events. But here's what I have to say. What about the other 80%? We know that lifestyle can prevent about 90 to 95% of heart disease at least maybe more. We can't ignore that other 80%. And here's the mopping the floor analogy made famous by Dr. Dean Ornish. Two doctors just mopping up water on the floor, ignoring the sink overflowing in the background. That's like giving a blood pressure medication to lower the blood pressure, a diabetes medicine to lower the sugar, a cholesterol medicine to lower the cholesterol without having anybody treat the cause of the problem, their diet and lifestyle. You can mop up this floor, but if you don't shut that faucet off, Eventually, your mops aren't going to work very well. Now, we do have some really good mops, but not good enough. It just makes such common sense. If you saw this, you would walk straight to that faucet, shut it off right away, go at the cause. And that's what lifestyle medicine does. There's no easy fix to things. Everybody always wants something that's going to make them suddenly 
fast, lose weight, and, and, and do the right thing without actually putting the work in. Think about artificial sweeteners. You can still taste things that are sweet. You know what? They don't make you lose weight. They don't reduce mortality, they failed. I've had patients say to me, oh, during a stress test, when we give a medication to simulate exercise, this is great, IV exercise. No, I don't need to go to the gym, right? No, it's not the same thing. I had a patient who was smoking once say, hey doc, I love smoking. Can't you just put a HEPA filter in my lungs so that way I could keep smoking? No, it doesn't work that way. Drugs may have a small role in weight loss, but lifestyle medicine is the absolute solution. Now I admit the solution is quite complex and I don't have all the answers, but it is gonna require an absolute huge investment, a multidisciplinary approach. Primary care needs to be the focus. All primary care doctors need to be lifestyle medicine focused with nice long appointments. They need to get paid for prevention and keeping their patients healthy. We need an absolute culture change to get the processed foods out, dramatically reduce the animal foods and be more plant-based. We need a change in government policy. The Surgeon General needs to immediately put a Surgeon General warning on sugar and refined grains, as well as processed and red meats. There is clear science that the risk is so darn high of developing heart disease, diabetes, and cancers. There just needs to be a warning right away, maybe even on just all processed foods in general. Now I know this is controversial, but what about taxing unhealthy foods? We do this for cigarettes already, right? We do this for other things that aren't good for our environment, gasoline, et cetera. Why not a sugar tax, a meat tax, a processed food tax? Now, again, it's complicated. I don't know all the nuances, but this is something that we really need to think about as a country in order to get our system healthy because Medicare is gonna go broke, so many people are dying and we're just not doing enough. And one of the other major keys Lifestyle medicine needs to be in medical training. Every doctor needs to have a complete lifestyle medicine focused curriculum. I had none of this stuff. It is the most powerful tool that we can absolutely use for our patients and for the country. And I have to say that advocating weight loss drugs for the majority of people who are obese is essentially giving up on lifestyle medicine. It may be one tool, it may be a bridge, a transition tool until we can fix our broken system and get the processed foods out, animal foods reduced, and people taking more of a lifestyle medicine approach, but it is not the solution for everybody and should not be presented that way. Anybody who gets put on a weight loss drug should be mandated to go through a long lifestyle medicine program first to educate them the right way to lose weight. Well, I hope you liked this video. Please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss future videos. Give me your thoughts in the comments below about what you think is the best solution for our obesity epidemic. See you next time.